Today, Thursday, August the 20th, we celebrate the Feast of St. Bernard of Clairvaux, abbot and doctor of the church. One of the great monastic leaders and theologians of the history of the church. He has been referred to as the last of the Western Fathers. He treated theological subjects after the manner of the ancients. On this account, for the great excellence of his writings, while he is the youngest reckoned among the fathers, at the same time, one of the greatest in the eyes of many. Born in 1890, near Dijon in France, at age 22, he became a monk at the nascent monastery at Sitio, which had the strictest monastic rule of the time. A remarkable individual in an unparalleled happening, he persuaded about 30 of his relatives and friends to join him in entering the monastery. Already it seemed that his eloquent appeals were irresistible. One commentator remarked, quote, mothers feared for their sons, wives for their husbands, lest they come under sway of that compelling voice and look, unquote. St. Bernard became a major leader in revitalization of Benedictine monasticism through this relatively new order of Cistercians. Then, after a few years, he was ordered to establish a new foundation at Clairvaux, where he was made abbot, a position he would hold for the next 38 years. At first, he was overly severe on the monks, but later eased up a bit. The monastery prospered and other branches were established in France, Britain, and Ireland. By the time of his death in 1153, there were some 700 monks at Clairvaux itself. Despite commitment to a life of solitude and seclusion from the world, by 1128, he had become rather active in the affairs of the church. In 1121, he had already been reported to have wrought his first miracle, and his reputation for holiness and miraculous power grew. I recall visiting Tre Fontana. This is the site of St. Paul's beheading outside Rome where he, St. Bernard, was reported to have had an angel assist him in celebrating Mass at the chapel there because no server had shown up. So great was the reputation of his character and powers that princes desired to have their differences determined by him, and bishops regarded his decisions with respect. Popes came to look upon his advice as a great support of the Holy See. And people had a profound respect for his person and views as, ref as reformer as well. He secured approval for the new order of Knights Templar. After a disputed papal election in 1130, he strongly supported the claims of Innocent II against the anti-pope and Ecclesiastes, and for the next eight years rallied much of the church to the side of Innocent. The schism ended with the death of Anacletus in 1138. Pope Innocent relied on him for various needs and papal support continued with the election in 1145 of Pope Eugenius III who was a former pupil of St. Bernard. A special friendship developed with St. Malachy of Armagh, Ireland. St. Bernard has been criticized for his unrelenting support, pursuit, however, of scholars like Peter Avalon for their theological opinions. 
He would intervene in various Episcopal elections. He preached exhausting campaigns against the Albigensian heresy in southern France at the Pope's urging. About 50 years later, the Dominicans would come to complete the effort. At the request of Pope Eugenius III, he vigorously preached the Second Crusade throughout Northern Europe. Many, both of high and low rank, rallied to his call. The crusade, however, ended in disaster in 1149. Some blamed Bernard for this, while, in turn, while he in turn blamed the crusaders for their lawlessness and lack of faith. An exception to many of his contemporaries, they Bernard opposed the persecution of Jews. Some of his theological and devotional writings have become classics, notably his treatise on loving God. Over the centuries, many, Catholics and Protestants alike, including Martin Luther, have praised his output. Perhaps the best known of all his works were his 86 sermons on the Song of Songs which ranged from reflections on the practical life of a monk to the mystical union between Christ, the bridegroom, and the church, which Richard McBrien notes sometimes even included himself as the bride. St. Bernard's hymns were numerous and several remain beloved, such as Jesus, the very thought of thee, St. Bernard was influential in promoting devotion to the humanity of Christ and to the Blessed Mother. The Memorare Prayer may be misattributed, however, to this 12th century monk, apparently due to confusion with its 17th century popularizer named Father Charles Bernard. But in any event, the Memorare beautifully expresses St. Bernard's belief on the power of the intercession of the mother of the word incarnate. Bernard made a profound impact on the development of Western monasticism with emphasis on mystical prayer. He so meditated on Holy Scripture that in almost every sentence it seemed he borrowed something from biblical language. His final years were taken up with the writings of his longest work, on consideration. It had been requested by Pope Eugenius, who wanted a comprehensive treatise on papal spirituality. Finally, in 1153, after succeeding in meditating an armed conflict in Lorraine, he returned to Clairvaux, a sick man, and died on this day, August 20th, 1153. By then, there were some 400 Cistercian houses in Europe. On top of everything else, because of Bernard's reputation for healing and miracles, his wide fame had grown during his lifetime, and he was formally canonized two decades after his death in 1174. Then in 1830, he was declared a doctor of the church. Because of his eloquence, he has been called the Lefloy's doctor, the honey sweet doctor, which became the title of an encyclical letter in his honor written by Pope Pius XIII, uh, the 12th, not yet, in 1953. He is patron saint of Gibraltar, candle makers, St. Bernard should not be confused, however, with St. Bernard of Aosta in the Alps, from whom St. Bernard dogs received their name. Here in the Archdiocese, a church in his honor in Riverdale is important to me, as there, as a seminarian, I experienced parish ministry, and it was the site of my first Mass. St. Bernard Clavel, pray for us.